Welcome back, Nerd Squad, to Top 10 Nerd. I'm your host, Johnny Rogers. And I'm Sasha Wood, and we're doing all kinds of doubles. All the combinations, all the people we can find. I'm very excited about it. We're talking Marvel, DC, and more stuff, which is great, finally. Mm, yeah, and if you're feeling good about that, then tap that subscribe button. Make sure you stay all the way until the end, because you won't believe which scary fact about the boys that we put at our number one spot. And just get excited with us. The boys. I'm so excited. The boys. It looks amazing. Are you going to make a me and the boys joke? I forgot to last time. <laughs> also, please leave us a comment. I read all of them. I don't like all of them, but I still appreciate that you leave them. <laughs> and while you ponder that, let's jump into today's video, the top 10 scary the boys fact that you need to know. Also, if you don't want any spoilers, like at all, then we suggest you bookmark this video. You know, you've been warned, so take it away, Sasha. This series will out preacher preacher. Garth Ennis, the creator of The Boys, has garnered quite the reputation for just how graphic and shocking his work can be, with The Boys being the pinnacle for many. However, before that, that title went to another Ennis series, Preacher. This series was printed under DC's Vertigo imprint, and at the time, from 1995 to 2000, was known for just how many boundaries it pushed. It too has been adapted. Ennis has stated that one of his goals when developing The Boys was to out preacher preacher, and it's safe to say he succeeded to the point that DC actually cancelled the book, and it was picked up by Dynamite. Comics, which Ennis states was the biggest blessing in disguise they could have had. Because at Dynamite, they could go really hardcore. Talking about the boys can be hard for a YouTuber because the range of what you can show, well, sometimes it would just be a sensor bar. Heads crushed, men having sex with asteroids, babies eaten, the whole nine yards. In at number nine, a dark deconstruction. When a superhero comic book is published, they usually take it one of two ways. The writer will either use a storyline of deconstruction or reconstruction. Deconstruction is where the comic book or movie adaptation will criticize our ideas of superheroes and really break down the moral complications that come along with that. Reconstruction, on the other hand, is when the narrative builds the heroes back up to the point of admiration and heroism. The boys go full deconstruction and dive deep into the dark world that exists in the aftermath of superheroes. With superpowers comes super destruction, and sure, the people being saved are happy, but what about everybody else's lives that live in the vicinity? Soups lose hundreds of people each year to collateral damage. I can't stop. I can't stop. Robin! Number 8. It plays with realism. Historical realism. As the boys take a more realistic look at the myth of the superhero and what role they would play in our world in terms of media and just how it would shape our society and aspirations, it sets its scene in a realistic realm as well, taking a Marvel-esque approach in that history has largely unfolded the same way it has in real life, but it has been impacted greatly by the existence of these supers. This plays out quite interestingly in how the comic tackles retelling 9-11. Yes, it tackles that, which for some was already a step too far. This arc was controversial. In The Boys, the Vought Corporation allows one plane to slip through the net after stopping the first two, so that it can showcase their new premier superhero team, the Seven, and test them in action. The only problem, they're untrained, undisciplined, and some are bullies and cowards. The whole rescue attempt is botched, and ultimately the Homelander forces the plane to crash land into the Brooklyn Bridge, destroying it. Making that the monument of destruction left behind by 9-11, though the media covers it up as a victory. That's just one of the many ways the supers change this world. It's all dark, sad stuff. Not a happy world. Little joy. Except for me. In at number 7, The Unadaptable Series. After AMC's Preacher had wrapped up its third season, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg will take another shot at bringing to life the brilliant work of Garth Ennis. Before the release and success of Preacher, both The Boys and Preacher were considered largely unadaptable. Comic books have a unique space where they can essentially get away with whatever they want. However, when it comes to bringing that to television or the big screen, the censorship boards usually pump the brakes. Both of these comic books have extreme violence and very mature subject matter, but the success of Preacher was so undeniable that it carved out a nice little pathway for shows like The Boys to make it through. Spank the bastards when they get out of line. Number 6. Starlight was originally going to have much worse happen to her. One of Ennis' favorite characters while writing the series, or she came to be, was the character of Starlight, or Annie January, a new hero with genuine beliefs in the supers, brought onto the team to replace a dead teammate that the team and the media is pretending just retired, by having his corpse reanimated in a zombie-like state, so it can appear in the background of shots sometimes. They keep him in the basement. 
Yeah. Annie suffers some of the worst the Seven has to offer, from humiliation to sexual assault, but ultimately becomes one of the most well rounded characters, and one that opens up numerous discussions about faith, personal responsibility, what it means to be good, disillusionment, and more. However, initially, Ennis was just going to have her be there as a punching bag, an example of the evil the Seven do as acted out through a foil. So her treatment was initially going to be much worse. However, once he began writing and the romance that develops in the series began to unfold, he started to think there's much much more here, and she deserves better. And hence, her more fleshed out arc was born. In at number five, a Zack Snyder connection. For those of you who are unaware as to who Zack Snyder is, he was the director for Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice, a largely controversial figure in the world of superhero movies. But nonetheless, he became a huge inspiration for the Boys showrunner Eric Kripke. The Boys will explore the violent and arrogant superheroes called the Seven that basically have full control over the city. Picture corrupt cops with superpowers, and you're pretty much. Much there. The sociopathic seven in the series begin to approve their very own movie deals within the television show, and Kripke says this is where the Snyder aesthetic comes through. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Eric said every time they make a superhero thing, they're making a Zack Snyder movie. In the stuff that Vaught makes, we were inspired more by DC than Marvel. The Marvel stuff is actually reasonably grounded, but the DC stuff tends to get a little pretentious, and we wanted the Vaught superhero movies to be a little full of themselves. Like a bunch of Number 4. The real world has altered this adaptation. Now things are products of their time, it is inevitable that the real world ekes into works. What varies is the degree. Some people are trying to make something more timeless, while others strive for something more topical or relevant. Eric Kripke has been quite candid in discussions about the boys, and how factors like the 2016 election and the Me Too movement have altered how they have adapted, scripted, and shot scenes. He has been particularly forthcoming about some changes to Annie's plot, as he wanted to handle it respectably, and not have it be shocking for shocking sake. Bruce Lee, shots fired at Ennis, and the boy's shock factor actually has a point, cause comics aren't normally that brutal, it's a contrast and purposeful, but I digress. Any story is a powerful one, but depending upon how it is presented, it can change the core tenement of what the series is critiquing. In the comic, the fact that Annie doesn't go public about what happens to her is largely because she believes in the myth of what superheroes are and doesn't want to shatter it. Coming out of that and realizing that these people are changing her, warping her, and what has occurred and what she has done, and Annie has agency and is very candid with herself, is a big part of the parallel between the Sevens and the boys' stories. Kripke was quick to point out in this she can come forward and has a voice, which again, shots fired, she had one in the comics. However, this could be well presented, and while it hasn't aired yet, so it could be brilliant and I could love it more than the comics, what's scary here, for me at least, is I just clench up whenever someone says it's relevant. I just flashed all those relevant works from the 80s and 90s that have aged poorly. Remember when American Beauty was relevant? Remember when Crash was topical and healed the world? So do I. I'm scared. In at number three, No Heroes. This is definitely not your average superhero show by a long shot. In fact, there's no heroes at all. All you have is unlikable good guys that are conceited and self involved coming into conflict with a rogue CIA group whose mission is to destroy the quote unquote good guys. Kripke has said himself that while he's a fan of Marvel movies, he believes a myth of superheroes always being noble has sprung up and needs to be criticized. The show is meant to expose superheroes and make audience realize that just because we're handed superpowers doesn't mean we won't use them for our own interests and motivations. They blow that perspective of heroes being the good guys right out of the water when they show Huey's girlfriend being torn to shreds by a super who's too busy to care. Number two, it takes on comic books. This piggybacks a little bit off of Johnny's last point. So The Boys is a comic, but it's also very critical of the comic industry, or more so the mythology industry, the act of putting ideas on pedestals. There's a running theme throughout the book that this is a way for people to avoid the responsibility of having to change the world themselves by believing that some magical person is just around the corner coming to save them. Basically, the anti Superman thought process, because that one is our myths give us hope and keep us strong. Layers, it's deep. It's not just shocking to be shocking. That creepy interview has me shook. I'm scared. Of the boys' arcs, one of the most off putting to some is Herogasm, which, oh man, that one. Don't start with that one. I can barely show you anything. So much boobs and nakedness and just everything. Herogasm is basically an exercise in superhero debauchery and the seven's descent. Read at your own risk. I personally love Herogasm, but I just love the boys. 100% biased. Read the omnibuses, they're on sale, not sponsored. Last but not least, in our number one spot, Supernatural. As you know by now, Eric Kripke is the showrunner for the boys, and Kripke is known for his work on the television show. 
show Supernatural, which was picked up by the WB. Eric had spent nearly 10 years developing the series Supernatural and says that he has always been fascinated with urban legends ever since he was a child. Although whenever you're dealing with a network as large as the WB, creators often feel handcuffed with what they're allowed to do. The show went through several phases before becoming the final 14 season run that we received and that being said, now that the boys has been picked up by Amazon Prime, the cuffs have come off. Kripke said as I mentioned before that this time he will be doing a full deconstruction of not just superheroes but entitled celebrities and the absolute worst of our politics. Thanks for watching, I don't know about you, I'm hyped, I think I'm a bit too hyped though. <laughs> I know, I'm trying to like calm myself down and like, don't, don't get your you know, hopes, hopes up. too high, I'm going to be high. here next week, like it was terrible, yeah. I hate it, don't watch it. <laughs> Everything wrong with the boys, like oh, I hope not. Oh my god. I hope not. Can you imagine if it goes as long as Supernatural, it's like 22 seasons later we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> We're still here talking about the boys. You know what? I'd be fine with that. I don't know if I'd be. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to leave us a like. And of course, please subscribe and do all of the other YouTube things, and hit that notification button so that you never miss a video. We're talking about all of the things, more than the boys. Plus, leave us a comment down below with which one from our list surprised you the most. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll say my She's name. trying to say if you want more videos like this one, all you gotta do is click that playlist on the screen. <laughs> Completely blank. I'm Sasha Wood. Thanks so much for watching. And I'm Johnny Rogers. Take care. Bye.